All right, everybody. Welcome to the Hockey Gambling Podcast on the Sports Gambling Podcast Network. My name is Talon Jenkins. Joined by our host, we got Howard Stern in Philadelphia, and we got Joel Meyer live from Vancouver. Gentlemen, how the hell are we doing tonight? I'm doing all right. My microphone uh, stand holder here is apparently giving some problems, so I'm going to have to mute myself throughout the show. But no, I'm doing good. Friday night here, feeling good. Excellent. But uh, yeah, so as, as people in the Discord know, I've been having a, a very tough time betting hockey the past five weeks or so. It, it's been a struggle. Uh, I mean, this time of year, it, it's all about motivation and information. Uh, Talon's making weird gestures that are uh, disturbing and distracting. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so anyway, Tuesday, Wednesday, they were both great. They were fantastic. I was thinking, oh, finally, am I out of this hole? Are, are we out of this hole? Is the tide turning? And then Thursday afternoon, Thursday evening, the third fucking came right back at me and it didn't turn. It just fucking drowned me again. And uh, yeah, Thursday. Not good in hockey, not good whatsoever, but um, we carry on. College basketball, though, has been absolutely brilliant. I've only lost one bet so far, so smashing that. Um, yeah, things look good features-wise, too. So good start to the tournaments for that, but hopefully we got to turn this hockey ship around, man. I mean, it's been a good season overall. We, we killed it November to February, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's, we got, we're, we're giving a lot back in the past month or so. So we're going to turn this uh, shit around. Talon, how are you? Is it my turn? Oh shit! Yeah. I guess Ryan, <laughs> right right yeah. I, all right. I've had a couple of beers, not really eating anything, so I'm feeling great. I got a story. It is really funny. I forgot. So I was coming home from work, and like when I got off work, there's an OCBO right across the street from where I work, right? So I always I take the subway. So I always go in. I'll buy like three beers: one for the walk to the subway, one to be on the subway, and one from the walk from the subway to my home once we arrive at my destination. You know what I mean? So as I'm going in there, and there's just there's this homeless guy out front. And I'm sure you guys live in like heavy populated areas. There's a lot of homeless people everywhere. Ryan, I'm sure you see them everywhere in Philly. Joel, East Fam, I'm sure you have a plethora of the less oh, fortunate. No. Um, and then this gentleman, I'm walking in and shit, and he's like, "Buy me a," he's like, "Buy me a drink, or I'll punch you." <laughs> 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 no joke. I was like, "Oh shit!" And so I turned. I'm like, "What if I bought you two? And he's like, "Then I won't punch the next person." <laughs> <laughs> So I'm buying my beers. I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. Whatever. Right? Let's get him a couple of beers. So I bought him two. And you won't fucking believe this. It was the best fucking thing. So I bought him two. I'm like, here you go, bro. And I'm like, what are you going to do with the second one? He's like, I'm going to drink it. I'm like, okay. And so I'm walking away. And I heard somebody else walking in like behind me. And I heard him say, you're lucky, punk. <laughs> <laughs> I was crying. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. So to that one person in Toronto that didn't get sucker punched by a homeless person because I bought them two beers, you owe me with your life, God damn it! But okay, other than that, I'm doing good. We're ready to go. Let's jump on into this, baby. We got uh, what do we got going on? We got 11 games tomorrow in the NHL. That's gonna be awesome. Tons of stuff in the world of sports, including those 11 games. Obviously, we're gonna dive into that. Uh, we got baseball going on, shambles. The whole MLB is in shambles. An interpreter is in the bottom of this mix. There's a bunch of stuff going on. You know, I'm sure there's other places that you can learn much more about that than we can. Uh, what else is going on here? We got March Madness. Boys, how's everything going? Jolie, I know you're pretty dialed into this. What's up with March Madness? Everything good? Yeah. Well, during the show, we, we had a big upset with Oakland uh, knocking off Kentucky. Kentucky has like their starting lineup is basically all going to be in the NBA. And they lost to uh, a team mm. that's from, um, I don't know, suburbs of Detroit or something. Like that, that just terrible, terrible team. Uh, so that's a huge upset, a huge, huge ordeal. But that's not the first time that uh, Coach Cal has suffered such an embarrassment. Um, and then today, Auburn, another uh, SEC school, they went down to uh, Yale, you know, Ivy League school. So. They lost to nerds? <laughs> yeah, they lost to nerds. Um Gosh. Yeah, so uh, that's good for me though, because UConn, I'm heavy on UConn to win the the region, and, and Auburn was their their toughest competition, so we knocked them out of the way. And uh, yeah, the path is clear for UConn to make the Final Four, um, so that's good news. Good news there. Um, yeah, those are the two major upsets, other than you know, BYU. We mentioned that yesterday, and yeah, it's great games today. There was some um, some real sweats I had, but uh, thankfully I, I emerged on the. The winning end of both of them, but yeah, it was a great reminder of, of what uh, fun this competition could be. Ryan, you on anything heavy or what? No, I just got a, a, some on some on UConn, some on some some props here and there, but nothing, nothing, nothing too big. 
Right on, man. I'm just free ball and betting. I got no clue what I'm betting. I'm just hoping. So far, we're okay, you know, so far. But I, it's a pretty reckless method. I don't think it's going to stand. But anyways, tons of stuff in the world of sports. Buddy at work today was trying to talk to me about F1. He's like Polish or something like that. I just can't do it anymore. But hell yeah, tons of stuff there. You can check it all out. Uh, be sure to go check out the Sports Gambling Podcast Network website. That's the place to be. Tons of stuff going on. You can find all the information there. Uh, listen to all the other shows. Everybody does a kick ass job. Check out all the articles as well. Check out Ryan's Fantasy Hockey articles. He's been pumping out. I gave him a little tired pump yesterday. I meant to. He's, he's been killing it. He goes, hell yeah. Be sure to read those. It's playoff time, baby, in fantasy hockey. So it's the last chance to kind of get a little bit of an edge for it. He's still doing an awesome job. Uh, and of course, shout out to all our friends and pals in the Discord, man. Discord's awesome. Everyone's having a good time in there. A lot of basketball talk. It's that time of year. You know, that's okay. I hope everybody's having fun. I posted a live bet for Swiss playoff hockey. And no joke, as soon as I posted it, it was fucking a minute and a half later. is a live overtime bet. And HC Lugano scored in overtime. So it, it won for me. I was pretty stoked about that. We were riding with my boy Miko Costum wins one last time. So hell yeah, man. Discord's the place to be. Yo, if you're not in the Discord, you're not making money. If you want to get in there, reach out to myself or Ryan on Twitter. We should have point you in the right direction. Or you can reach out to the HGP Twitter account, social media assistant producer. We'll get you going. He'll do everything that you need to do. He's an absolute beauty. He'll hook you up. Uh, or what you can do is just Friggin' get in a time machine and grab Joel Meyer on your way back in time. Then you guys can both be born in the States and go to fucking Yukon University or some shit and cheer on what are they, the Huskies. Is that what they are? You, you nailed it. Yeah? Look yeah. at that. See a fucking buddy. Maybe I am a basketball guy. Who knows? And then when you guys are cheering for the Huskies together because you're both officially Americans, uh, you know, you can ask me, hey, by the way, how do you get in the Discord? And he'll be sure to hook you up. Yeah, and make sure you're subscribed on uh, Apple, Spotify, and YouTube as well. And make sure you comment, like, subscribe, all, all that good stuff there. Hell yeah, man. Uh, all right, we're going to yeah. go through our lock dogs and totals. And check oh, out the site, hockeygamblingpodcast.com. Yes. Great site. I got to start resource. mixing that into the rotation. Check out the hockeygamblingpodcast.com website, man. Our boy, our boy, our social media system producer, our boy Wings fucking absolutely killed it, man. It's, it's a lot of cool out there. I was on there today on my phone searching around looking at some fun stuff so hell yeah um all right let's move down to our lock dogs and totals from last show uh this was the for the games that were on march 21st which i guess was yesterday uh boys boys little three and old performance from the kid here up 3.43 units uh ryan had a good day as well two and one uh up 0.51 units and Joel a little bit of a struggle he got shafted a couple times here uh one and two down 2.17 units um i'll kick us off here man for my lock i had tampa bay on the puck line versus san jose minus 142 uh they played like shit it was first i went to sleep like halfway through the second period of this game man and they had like eight shots it was a one one tie i was praying that i woke up to see them turn on the jets here uh in the third period and they did i think it was like a 4-1 final didn't dig too much into the stats of the game but bolts ended up getting it done uh, for my dog, I took St. Louis Moneyline versus Ottawa, plus 110. I think it was like a 5-2 finish. Wasn't really sweating this one out too much. Uh, Sens are in shambles, dude, and the Blues have a have a little bit more to play for. Long shot to make it in, but they're still not out. Uh, if they win, you know, you never know things can happen. So, uh, And then for my total, Jets, Devils, under 6, minus 108. This was relatively stress-free. The final score was like 4-1. I think it was a little bit inflated. I think it was like a 2-1 game or something going into the third period. So, uh, yeah. You know, happy to happy to see where we are. Yeah, I had the uh, Jets as my lock, minus 125 at the Devils. They got out shot 41-19 in that one, so not really a good bet there. But my, my dog and my total, Predators, plus 160 at the Panthers. They won that one 3-0 to hit, hit my dog in total there. Preds are for real, guys. So hopefully they didn't pick too soon, though. Well, I mentioned I got drowned on Thursday, so... I'm lucky I had one of these. One of these. One of these bets was a was a winner. Um, one of my few winners on the day if I happened to be my total, which was the Canadians Canucks under six and a half. Uh, I mean, this was a, this is a no doubter. I mean, I wish every every game was was as easy as a Canucks game for me. I, I got this team <laughs> nailed on right now. I figured out what's going on with them. Unfortunately, not the rest of the league. So uh, yeah, the Canucks unders right now are the are the nuts um <laughs> the nux nuts uh, uh what <laughs> <laughs> you don't know, like the nuts and even when you have a great hand in, in poker um what do you call that the nuts um anyway. do you that's the first i've ever heard that in my life bro yeah yeah man uh i've been watching a lot of uh, betting gambling movies lately so uh 
I've, I've got that on the mind. Not nuts, uh, gambling. Um, well, where do you find it? Browsers? Like Browsers Poker or something? This hands the nuts. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, my lock was the Islanders' money line, minus 108 against the Red Wings. Uh, they, they had a good start, but James Reimer made some great saves, and then the Isles just fucking fell apart. Um, yeah, Soroka, not a good second period from him just bad I mean, the red wings are up 5-1 at, at one point um islanders kind of made it a game in the third period but patrick wall pulling the goalie down three goals to make it 5-3 they, they got one and then uh yeah red wings scored in the empty net 6-3 i think was the final islanders are pretty much dead red wings are just hanging on i guess they're like uh i don't know Ugh. and then my dog the bruins regulation against the uh the rangers Swayman was not great in this game, and if he's not being great, the, the Bruins aren't winning against good teams lately. So, yeah, that, that was no good there. They had an early lead, but a couple weak goals by Swayman, and then the Rangers took over. Rangers were, yeah, they're, they're impressive again this game. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that Patrick Wall just hates Ilya Sorokin's guts right now. Like, he looks at this guy probably on the ice and was probably like, dude, I would have stopped that. Like, could you could you imagine you're Sorokin? Like, you like you play a game and you look over at your bench and you got fucking Patrick Wall looking at you. Like, what the fuck, bro? That's probably why he's playing worse and worse. Dude, 100%. Remember when Gretzky coached the Coyotes? Imagine you're like a fourth liner and you botched it like an easy breakout pass and you look to your bench and you got fucking Wayne Gretzky looking at you like, really? You couldn't do that? You know, some of these like legendary players shouldn't be allowed to be coaches, you know, just because of that alone. But I don't know. That's crazy. <laughs> All right. Uh, we're brought to you by Cut. Cut's a peer-to-peer -peer social betting platform that's U.S.-based and available in 40 states. Peer-to-peer -peer social betting is a new and better way to bet. Direct bet directly against anyone on any event with a verifiable outcome. And they got tons of fun social features like group chats, betting leaderboards, head-to-head -head history, user profiles, fan groups, and more. Cut offers lower VIG and fully customizable odds. You can create your own bets. Cut also handles the payment side of things, so you don't have to chase anyone down for money. And you get cash back every single time you bet against your friends or other users. So download Cut today in the App Store or over at Cut.com. That's K-U-T-T. -T, and use promo code SGPN for a 10% deposit bonus. And Underdog Fantasy is the easiest place to play fantasy sports. It's also the fastest growing fantasy app in the industry. Pick whether your favorite players have a higher or lower stat total for a chance to win up to 100 times your money in a single night. Uh, so sign up today with promo code HGP and get your first deposit doubled up to $100 as well as an instant pick -em special. Visit underdogfantasy.com or find them in the App Store and use promo code HGPN, HGP to get your first deposit doubled up to $100 as well as an instant pick -em special. Must be 18 years or older and present in the state where Underdog Fantasy operates. Terms apply. Concern with your play? Call 1-800-522-4700 or visit ncpgambling.org. All right, boys, we got an 11-game slate set here for Saturday, March 23rd. Uh, are we ready to rock and roll here or what? Oh, yeah. Hell, yeah. This is going to be a good weekend of hockey. What do we say? We got like eight games on Sunday as well. Ten. We got ten. ten games? Hitters, oh, yeah. We got 21 games in the next two days. Boys, it's hockey time. Let's go. Let's get into this. I'm fired up. First game on the docket of the 1 p.m. time slot here. We got the Boston Bruins against the Philadelphia Flyers. Game itself is in Philadelphia. Boston on the money line is minus 155. Philly on the money line is sitting at plus 130. Over under sitting at five and a half. Over paying off minus 130. The under plus 110. Mr. Ryan Gilbert, as a resident Philadelphia native and Flyers super fan here, I got to ask you one question. Is that fucking piece of shit coach you got going to scratch your goddamn captain again for this game or what? I, I could definitely see him doing that. I don't think they practiced today, so no no lines were ran. But, yeah, two, two impressive showings this week, a uh, win against the Leafs, then earned a point down there in Carolina, both without Sean Couturier. Now a tough back-to-back -back against Boston and Florida this weekend. And, yeah, I am not I don't have anything for this game. i probably lean to Boston. I think minus 148 is a bit too low here. But, you know, we just saw this game. It was 6-5 uh, last weekend. Flyers came back a few times in that one. So can't really take a total either, but uh, I think the Bruins here are probably the better play at minus 148. Yeah, I kind of like the Flyers here. They've been playing pretty well lately. Bruins, um, even when they're winning games, they weren't exactly convincing about it. Just you know, like, uh, again, just uh, they were dependent on their goaltending. Um, but it is a, it is one of these afternoon games. We know how much the Bruins, uh, how often they play them. So they're definitely 
used to waking up early, playing earlier in the day, so that gives them the advantage here. Uh, minus one fifty five, can't back them. Lean, I still lean the Flyers here, um, but I've I did bet, and my favorite bet in this game is is the under. Uh, both teams are, um, you know, not not quite uh, convincing lately. The putting the puck in the net, especially. Especially the Bruins. I mean, the Flyers are one of the better uh, rush teams in the NHL, but the, the Bruins are, they do a good enough job of stopping that. Plus, some, you know, elite goaltending. Hopefully, Swayman bounces back after uh, a poor game against the Rangers, or maybe we'll see Well, Mark. I'm not too concerned if that's the case. Either way, I like the under five and a half, um, the best in, uh, for this one. The end. All right. Well, Talent. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Apparently, the odds I put in the show sheet 25 minutes ago are already out of date. So I'm trying to pull up DraftKings right now so i make sure i get the right shit um yeah i really 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 like the bruins in this game here uh i'm still seeing minus 155 on the money line ryan what are you pulling up here no i have draftings up where do you get your information from all right whatever <laughs> um <laughs> yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna lean towards the bruins here uh coming off that tough loss against uh who did lose the other day? I think it was Florida that trimmed them up pretty good here. I think this team has a little bit to bounce back. We got to show us, I was, hey, we're going to fucking beat the piss out of the Flyers here. And then I think they play Tampa Bay after this. That might be wrong, but I may not be Tampa Bay, but they have a good team that they play against after this game here. Uh, so I think it's kind of like a get right spot for Boston just to remind themselves, yep, we're the real deal. They still have something to play for. They are in a battle right now for that first place spot in the Atlantic. Uh, they're currently sitting ahead of Florida with points. I think Florida has two games in hand or so. So, um, by all means, that Atlantic division is still open. Uh, so I'll take the Bruins on the puck line even at this point at a minus one and a half and plus 154. I think there's some value on that. I I know the whole scratch our captain, get a bump. Yes, Philly's been playing good since I've done it here. But I just think Boston has a lot of reasons to show up to this game. Uh, so I, I, I think, I think Ryan, you said a couple of shows ago, like Boston normally plays pretty well against Philly. Is that the thing? Yeah, they've won the last uh, seven meetings now. So yeah, they, they, they've been okay. dominating. Okay, so yeah, maybe uh, I like that even more. Over under in this game, I'm kind of leaning towards the over here. I know Julie said he really liked the under on this one. Um, I don't know. You know what it is? Early early Bruins games, they tend to be like high scoring affairs, and I got no metrics that I'm basing that off of. But I feel like every time it's like one o'clock or two o'clock, and I flip on a Bruins game, they've scored four or five goals on their own or something stupid like that. So I'm gonna be leaning towards the over on this one. I'll take the Bruins on the puck line, and regulation isn't a bad number as well. Or sorry, money line regulation. All right, moving down to the 1 p.m. time slot. We have the Winnipeg Jets against the New York Islanders. Game itself is in New York here. Uh, Jets on the money line sitting at minus 130. Islanders on the money line at plus 110. The over-unders at 5.5. Over paying off minus 108. The under minus 112. Um, this is another Jets line where we're like, hey, it seems a little bit low, but look what happened yesterday. They got their asses kicked, right, by uh, New Jersey 4-1. New Jersey outplayed the shit out of them in that game. I think the shots totals were like something crazy. I know it was like... 40 to 19 or something so winnipeg had a tough go um but that being said i got zero confidence in the islanders these days what are they on They're like a six game losing streak or something like that uh it's been pretty ugly like i said before uh patrick wall absolutely hates uh Ilya sorokin's guts and he's not playing vasileski has been confirmed for this game um who's been fine but uh, I don't know. I think we're going to see Winnipeg kind of come out blazing here. So I'll take the Jets at minus 130 on the money line over under in this game. But if a toughie to predict, neither team is really burns burner and scoring. The Islanders have let in a lot of goals. With that being said, a lot of that's been on Soroka, not Vasilevsky. Uh, I'm going to lean towards the under five and a half of this game at minus 112, but I don't really love it. I know Varlamov's been good. I didn't realize he's been Vasilevsky good, though. Did I call him Vasilevsky? My bad. Twice. Yeah. Twice. Twice. Oh, yeah. These fucking Russian V's, yeah. It's Varlamov. That's what I meant to say. I'm sorry. Yeah, I mean, you said it. We just the Jets were just minus 125 in New Jersey. Now they're minus 130 against the Islanders team, who I guess is in a similar boat to the Devils. But yeah, Islanders have lost seven in a row now. Jets don't tend to lose back to back games. They haven't done so in the past month, month and a half here. So I think they bounced back pretty good. Hellebuck is starting, as Talon said. So like them here, minus 130. Um, no real strong feeling for the total because you could see, you know, Patrick Wild pulling the goalie down two with five mm -hmm. minutes left in like a three one game. It could end up being like four two or something to go over five and a half. So just the Jets here for me at minus 130. Don't have too much to add, just that the Islanders uh, experienced a bit of a 
potentially a, a dream crusher there against the Red Wings. <laughs> I mean, losing that many games in a row it hurts bad enough, but when you're, you're you see your playoff race disappearing before your eyes, losing games to uh, other candidates for that wild card spot does not feel great. And uh, you have to think that the hope, the faith, and confidence are, are leaving the room. And then you got the Jets on the other hand, who experienced a bit of an embarrassing loss to the Devils. I know that they were um, the players were not happy with their performance, so I do think the Jets uh, bounce back here. I think that's likelier than the Isles doing so. The way that they've been playing, losing to some bad teams too, and their their goaltending is not helping them out as it, as it once did. So yeah, the, the Jets here would be the play. Um, yeah, and yeah, even. If, it's tough to, to go with an under in the Isles games these days, the way that they are uh, kind of regressing to how they played defensively before Patrick Watt took over, and their goaltending has been uh, even worse uh, than it was under uh, Lane Lambert. So, nah, no play on the total either. But, yes, I also like the Jets' money line. All right, moving down to the 2 p.m. time slot. We have the St. Louis Blues against the Minnesota Wild here. Game itself is in Minnesota. St. Louis on the money line sitting at plus 125. Uh, Minnesota on the money line at minus 148. Over under sitting at five and a half. Over paying off minus 118. The under minus 102. Uh, dude, I like the Blues a lot in this game. I know they haven't been a great road team, and I know Minnesota's actually been pretty decent at home here. Um, I think the Blues have been playing better hockey collectively than than uh, Minnesota has been heading into this game. Uh, the Blues are 6-4-0 in their last 10. Minnesota 6-2-2, and so I guess maybe not. Maybe about even a little edge to Minnesota. Um, but I just really like what I've seen in the Blues the past couple games, dude. Jordan Bennington's been an absolute stud. Uh, they're getting a little bit of goal scoring in the past couple games, too, which is nice to see. And the boys are playing like they're playing for something, which technically they are. So I'm going to take the Blues as road dogs here, plus 124, man. They've been pretty good to me lately. I think there's some value there. Um, they're not really scoring a lot of goals defensively on the year they don't look that great but you know the one thing that they have been able to do is uh is just not take a lot of penalties and at this point of the year it's pretty important we're seeing some goon plays and it's it's a tight match of it we're starting to see a lot of playoff hockey right so if that's one thing that you have going for you i think it kind of helps the team especially at this time of the year so i'll take the blues plus 124 over under in this game i'm leaning towards the under here man i hate the number of five and a half it's a minus 102 I'm seeing. If you can get like a six and a half or like a, a six, even at like minus 120 or six and a half or minus 140 or something, I think there might be some value in that. Bennington's been absolutely lights out. And even Flurry in his past couple games here, man, like he had a tough go his last showing against LA. But before that, like 30, 35 saves on 37 shots. He had a shutout against Anaheim. Not much to say there. Played against some shitty teams, but like 27 saves out of 30 shots against Nashville. So like Flurry has been fine as of late. So the under five and a half, I'd like it at a better number, but uh, I'll be leaning towards the under in this game. Yeah, I agree with the under five and a half there, minus 102. You can still get under six, minus 124. It can be books right now if you want to get, get that push insurance there. But I like the wild here. Huh? Min minus 148. Blues are not great on the road in the past 10 games. Overall, they have the uh, worst expected goal share in the league at five on five, and the wild have the fifth best. So, you know, they're playing better. They're at home here. Trying to get revenge on, on their last two losses against the Blues this month, both in St. Louis, 3-2, and then 3-1 here, 3-1 before that. So, yeah, I think like the Wild here, minus 148, as well as the under 5.5, minus 102. Uh, Wild are playing great defensively the past 10 games. Can't really score too much either, so I see another 3-1, 3-2 type of game. First, I was thinking of taking the Blues here. They just find ways to win these, these divisional matchups and – but uh, it's the Blues. Uh, Ryan, Ryan said it all. They, they don't have great numbers and all that. But I, I think some of that is, is a bit misleading, a bit more noise than signal. Uh, so uh, it's it's tempted to take the Blues, but I just can't do it. I mean, the Wild come back from that, that road trip, um, getting blasted 6 nothing. They got to be feeling pretty buttered about that. Uh, that could go two ways, either uh, come up firing or, or they're just giving up on the season. But either way, this is a – this is truly a loser leaves town game. I mean, they're probably already out of town. <laughs> the Knights have run them out like the uh, the sheriff or whatever because they keep winning these these close games. And the Kings, uh, yeah, they pretty much sealed their their fate with the uh, win against the Wild in the last game. Um, and they have a very easy schedule too. So I don't think either team are making the playoffs. But it, for last gasp attempts, this has got to be it. So for that reason, I think the uh, the under would be a, a play. Uh, we expect this to be a, a very tense 
an intense um, game here uh, in anticipation for like a, a playoff style match with um, not a lot of opportunities. So under five and a half or under six, whatever uh, would be the way to go for me. All right, moving down to the 5 p.m. time slot. Here we have the Detroit Red Wings against the Nashville Predators. Game itself is a Smashville, baby. Uh, Detroit to the money line sitting at plus 136. Preds on the money line at minus 162. Over under sitting at six. Over paid off minus 122. The under plus 102. Shout out to my boy, Rat Piss. My boy, Rat Piss, has been very active on Twitter. He's been my boy for the past little bit. You know, this guy's a beauty. He put a post in the comments saying, Wings money line plus 136 all day. Yeah, Fox. Yeah, we love that. Good to see you. Good to see you in the chat here, my boy Ratty. Uh, with that being said, I'm going so far against you in this goddamn game. I love the Preds here. Minus 162. Preds have gotten points in the past like 16 games. It's a franchise streak they've been on. Uh, they've been absolutely lights out. And you know what? If you watch the games, they're just playing good fucking hockey, dude. Doesn't matter who they put in the net, apparently, with Lincoln and getting a shutout against the Preds. Or, yeah, getting a shutout against uh, Florida the other night. Like, doesn't matter who they put in between the pipes. This team just shows up and plays well in front of them. And goaltending has been fine too. Uh, Detroit has been better since their little seven game losing streak. Give credit where credit's due. They're on a two game winning streak coming into this game. Uh, Alex Lyon is confirmed. Julie talked about last game there. You know, what was it? The Rhyme Minister showed up and had some big saves james reimer the other day but uh mm. i don't think i don't think we're gonna see that with alex lyon in this game so i'm gonna take uh the preds minus 162 it might even be looking for like a natural regulation play as well uh over under in this game don't have a look that i really love that's not true i'm leaning towards the under if this was a six and a half i would be all over it and you know what what, what are you gonna stop me from doing the six and a half if it's only six i'm still gonna do it uh with the way soros has been playing in detroit yes with larkin back which caught us all off guard i think we all thought he was gonna miss that game he scored two goals last time he was on the ice last game um so yeah i'm still gonna lean towards the under though man i think we're gonna see some tight contentious hockey here yeah, I don't have too much to add there at all. Love the Preds here, minus 162. Like Talon said, on, on a huge streak right now. Best expected goal share in the past 10 games. Detroit, yeah, got Larkin back. That's going to help them out. But I don't think that that's enough here on the road going down to Nashville. So, yeah, the Red Wings are only 15, 17, and one on the road. Predators, 19, 15, and one at home. So, Nashville here at home and a lean to the under six at plus 102, but probably won't end up betting that. I agree with you guys. So not much more to add. The Predators are winning games because they deserve to win these games. Red Wings are winning these games because they're getting fucking lucky. And Patrick Kane is like uh, basically carrying the team. Uh, he was awesome again against the Islanders. But um, yeah, Predators are a deeper team. They play better hockey. Uh, I love their system and all that, of course. And, and better goaltending too. Like, yeah, Alex Lyon has, has definitely not been playing as, as good as he was earlier. So uh, I love the Preds with you guys and lean to the under, I guess, but not in bet the total. All right. We're brought to you by Game Time. Buying tickets to your favorite event shouldn't be stressful. Game Time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets to all the sports, music, comedy, and theater near you. With killer deals on last minute tickets and their best price guarantee, you can stop stressing over the tickets and start getting hyped for the fun you'll have. Game Time app experience has those flash deals and they give you the image of the seat view so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. So download the Game Time app, create an account, and redeem code CFBX for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem code F CFBX for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right, heading down to the seven PM time slot here. We got a hell of a game, man. This is gonna be sweet. We have the Edmonton Oilers against the Toronto Maple Leafs, baby. Game itself is in Toronto on a Saturday night. That's goal. Cool. Oilers on the money line sitting at minus 120. Leafs on the money line at plus 100. Over under sitting at six and a half. Over paying off minus 115. The under minus 105 here. Um, do, 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 do. Yeah, I'll take this one here. This is going to be a hell of a game, man. Whenever Edmonton comes to town, it's always a blast. But David has a tendency of just lighting the absolute lamp against the Leafs. Um, I like. I like Toronto in this game, boys. They're, it's tough. Marner's obviously still not going to play. Labushkin is still sick. Tyler Bertuzzi has been going through an illness right now as well. He had a, he had a decent show the other night, dude. <laughs> What's with the Leafs this year? They're sick like every other every, week. <laughs> dude, you know who else is sick is people in Buffalo. And remember earlier when I said... 
Remember a couple of like months ago and I was like, when people in Toronto are sick, people in Buffalo are sick. Well, guess uh, what? Both teams are sick. So you yeah. Keep passing it like, back and forth between each other. That's what it is. You know, it's the hose. <laughs> they go back and forth on the QEW, man. So uh um, but no, I uh, I like Toronto at home here, man. I know there's been a lot of kind of the shit coming Toronto's way since they blew that loss to Carolina, but this team is still like 13, like two and two or something in the past, like 17 games or something crazy like that. They're, they're playing strong hockey. Defensively, it's starting to click a little bit. It'll be interesting to see if TJ Brody plays. I imagine he might get the scratch uh, for this game as well. Um, I think the Leafs show up, dude. Everybody knows this is a big time game. Edmonton fans are always on our ass here. Uh, and and the, the Leafs the Leafs actually do know that. So it's going to be a big game important for them. I'm taking Toronto here. They have been good at home. 18, 12, and 3. Edmonton's been fine on the road too as well. Or there's one two-game winning streak coming into this. Um, now as far as over-under goes in this game, this is where it gets a little iffy, okay? I'm leaning towards the over because there is a chance for a couple really special things to happen tomorrow night. Do you guys know what those special things are? No. no? There is a chance... For Zach Hyman, who is currently sitting at 48 goals on the year, to score number 49 and number 50 against the Toronto Maple Leafs. Would any of us be surprised if that happened? No. no. Absolutely not. Especially if he gets one early. You know McDavid's going to be looking for him with McDavid trying to hit 100 assists too for the rest of the night. Now, contrary to that, there's a chance that Austin Matthews gets a fucking hat trick and scores 60 goddamn goals against the Edmonton Oilers and just fucking blows his big old... Mexican American load all over all the Edmonton Oilers fans, and that's another beautiful sight to see too. And what I'm going to tell you is both those goddamn things are going to happen. All right, so I'm taking the over because we're going to have five goals alone between Matthews and Highwin in this game. I'm going to be on both of these players' shots on goal totals. Matthews has been sitting about three and a half to four and a half, depending on the night. Hyman's just been sitting at three and a half, and yeah, just bet anytime goal score for each of them. But Hyman two goals, and maybe bet Matthews three goals. Okay, hell yeah, let's go. Well, love those props there. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll take the over there with your over six and a half at minus 115. Uh, Leafs have been going over a lot recently. And then, yeah, Edmonton can definitely score themselves. Not sure who's going to be in net for them either. Both both teams on the first half of the back to back. So it could be getting the backups. I'm not sure who they play Sunday. But either way, I like the over six and a half at minus 115. But I do like the Oilers here at minus 130. Just got the motivation factor here. They're they're still playing for for their positioning in the Pacific, and the Leafs more or less have that third seed in the Atlantic kind kind of locked up. I know the, the Lightning are kind of pushing for that, but Edmonton could still technically catch Vancouver for, for first in the Pacific, which would be huge for them. So I think Edmonton here minus one thirty is a, is a good good look as well as the over six and a half. See, that's true in a lot of games for the Leafs with their their schedule and then the way they are in the standings, like locked into that third spot. But this is a game where they don't need to, to look at the standings to get up for this game because they're mm -hmm. going to go against the Edmonton Oilers. That means a lot to uh, the players who's down the sand. So, yeah, I'm not interested in that. I still like the Oilers to win the game because they, they should be bigger favorites. I think they're a lot better team, especially without Moner in the lineup and a couple other missing guys. And the Oilers are, are basically mm -hmm. fully healthy. And uh, we know McDavid likes to show up against the Leafs again, like um, Talon was saying. So, yeah, I, I think I like the Oilers win this game, uh, but I also like the over six and a half. I think the Leafs can score a few goals themselves. Hopefully, Matthew shows up for this one, pots a couple himself. Um, yeah, I, I think that this game with the big boys show up, it's hockey night in Canada. Let's fucking go. Let's get a good one. Uh, seven plus goals, and uh, let's four three over Oilers win in overtime. How about that? I forgot to mention that, yeah, the injuries for the Leafs. They got they got Labushkin quite out. Bertuzzi you were away for a talent segment. He listened. Oh, okay. All right. Good. All right. Carry on. One thing I will bring up, uh, Ryan brought up Leafs on a back-to-back. -back. Uh, they have to fly out after this game to play Carolina in Carolina on Sunday. So hammer the cane Sunday. I'm just going to say that. Uh, okay. Moving down to the 7 p.m. time slot again. We have the Ottawa Senators against the New Jersey Devils. Game itself is in New Jersey. Here sends on the money line. Sitting at plus 136. Devils on the money line. Minus 162. Over under sitting at six and a half. Over paying off. Minus 115. The under minus 105 here. Um, yeah, dude. I don't know how many times I got to talk about how bad the Senators are, but I guess I'm going to say it again. They absolutely stink. Uh, what are they in their past 10 games here? Let me take a little look. They are three six and one in their past 10 games um the devils had a great showing i know the devils are four and six in the last 10 as well but they had a great showing against winnipeg the other night we were talking about 40 shots generated dominated play i think it was like a 4-1 win or something like that 
I'm going to be all over the Devils here. I actually like the Devils in regulation in this game too, man. Like if minus 162 is a bit too much juice for you to pay, uh, I think the Devils can get this done in regulation. Out of Ottawa, I think out of their past like seven losses, six of them have been in regulation. Um, and let's face it, dude, the Sens on the road are absolutely horrendous this year. 10-20-2 record. Um, the Devils at home, not great either, 17-17-2. But they are starting to push a little bit. It might be a case of a little bit too late here. Um, but yeah, I'm still going to be all over the Devils in this game. Over, under, I don't really have a lean that I like either way in this. Gun to my head. I'm going to take the over just because I saw the offense that was able to be generated by New Jersey, and hopefully the Sens can pop in one or two themselves. But at six and a half, I probably won't bet it. Yeah, I like the Devils here a lot. Money line, minus 162. Puck line, too, at plus 145. Mm -hmm. Uh, Devils are 10, 12, and 1 since the All-Star breaks. So, you know, they've been very up and down, but all 10 of those wing, wins have come in regulation, and nine of them have been by at least two goals. So uh, I think that either regulation or puck line, you got to squeeze out some extra value there. could be worth it. Uh, yeah, the Sens are just, you know, they're they're running out of gas. They, they don't have much to play for at all. Devils could technically still be in the playoff race. You, you never know what happens with the, the Eastern Conference wild card, but still, yeah. Sends off on the road. Devils good at home. Sends lost three straight, getting outscored um, eighteen to six in those three games. So, so yeah, give me the give me the Devils here on the puck line. The slightly into the under six and a half, just because uh, Jake Allen's been pretty good for New Jersey. I thought maybe the Senators would uh, you know get their tits up when they fell out of the playoff mix early on and then you know we start playing good hockey when they in these meaningless games but that hasn't happened uh they keep losing and losing and losing um and the coach is 90 how do you get fired up when your coach is 90 years old for fuck's sakes yeah that's a good point there's right. no hope for the future when you know your i mean your coach is probably only gonna got a few years left so <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh so yeah hard to think uh, long term and uh yeah, Senators are uh, they're, they're in a cul-de-sac right now. I heard that they're that this offseason could be like a extremely important one for them. Could determine like the the next ten years of this franchise. We'll see what they do. But anyway, for this game, uh, yeah, totally agree with you guys. Devils all the way. They're playing better hockey. Still have a lot to play for after a couple good wins. Um, yeah, and they're, they're still in the mix. I mean, there's some shit teams ahead of them in the playoff mix. So why not? If you go on a run, you'll see those bad teams there's fall off. Get the can happen. You're insane. Why would you even say that? That's nuts. Uh, <laughs> it can happen. No, the Jake Allen making saves. Dude, tell me what odds you want. Tell me what odds you want. What are the Sens or the Devils? The Devils. The devils. I'm not talking oh, about I Devils. Thought said, I thought devils. you said the Sens. Okay. Okay. <laughs> no, my I'm bad. I was gonna. Talking. I was about to give you a million to one. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> They're probably only a few games away from being um, clinched. Mathematically eliminated? Yeah, you're <laughs> yeah. probably right. Uh, okay, my mistake. Uh, yeah, yeah. Over six and a half as well. I know the Senators have struggled to score lately. Alfredson, his, since he's been uh, in charge of the power play, it's, it's gone to shit for some reason. Um, yeah, the coaching, <laughs> coaching in Ottawa is not ideal right now. So. No. Yeah, and Jake Allen has been good, but the Devils team total, I think, would be uh, a better play maybe than the over. Joe Quinn will do the Sens, baby. Let's go. Uh, I, I do want to preface this. I know I shit on Ottawa a lot. Um, I have a. I think Steve Steyos overall will do good by this franchise and give it a couple of years, and you know maybe they'll be in a better spot. So I will say that. I have faith in Steve Steyos. Um, all right, moving down to the 8 p.m. time slot here. Great fucking game. We got the Florida Panthers against the New York Rangers. Game itself is in New York here. Florida on the money line sitting at minus 110. Rags on the money line at minus Ooh. 110. You know what that means, baby. We gotta pick them, pick them, pick them, pick them, pick them, pick them, pick them. Hell yeah, we gotta pick them in New York here. This is gonna be awesome. Over under sitting at six and a half, over paying out plus 110, the under minus 130 here. Uh, Mr. Joel Meyer, I'm gonna toss this pick them over to you, buddy. What are you thinking here? This is uh, as high leverage as it gets for me with all the futures involved. We got the all the Panthers for presidents, the Canucks presidents, and then whatnot. Nothing on the Rangers. They keep winning games, the scum. And then we got the Hurricanes for the division. The Rangers keep winning games, the scum. So the, and the Panthers <laughs> to win the division got a lot more on them than the Bruins. So uh, yeah, Panthers need to pick it up. Made two, three losses in a row, not ideal. So this is a game I'm already heavily invested in the Panthers, but we're doubling down. We're going Panthers money line because I think they're a better team. And the Rangers are been playing like a million games against good teams. Eventually, you're going to get exhausted. You'd like to think anyway. I mean, um, yeah, Panthers have got, 
got to pull it together. They're a great team, great coach. Uh, three losses in a row is, is not something you want to see before the playoffs here, and uh, this is, could easily be a playoff matchup at some point. So you want to put your best game forward. Uh, Rangers after an emotional win against the Bruins. Everything just, just screams Panthers to me. Better team. And, yeah, minus 110 I think is, is very cheap. So love the Panthers here. Love the other six. Minus 105. Panthers get back to playing. Play off uh, Panther Hawk, you know that. I know they take uh, quite a bit of penalties. The Rangers do have a good power play. Maybe that's their path to victory, but I don't care. Panthers are going to win this game. Um, you know, minus one ten is is uh, is a good price. Yeah, I'm in a similar spot to Joel with with futures on the Canes and on the Panthers, and nothing really on the Rangers here. So I, I'm already kind of backing the Panthers here, but I'll do it, I'll do it again. Minus one ten, like Joel said, they, and they have three three losses in a row, but they ha- had four days off before that that game against Nashville, so it could have been some rust there. Now they're going to be amped up going into New York, who is coming off the win in Boston. Um, so yeah, I think like the Panthers here, I think they're the much better team. I think all of us had them much higher in our Stanley Cup uh, tiers there. So they're b- much better built long term. But the one thing that that does give me pause is over the past 10 games, uh, Panthers have the eighth lowest expected goal share. Now they have played some tough opponents, Carolina, Dallas in there, Rangers before. But yeah, they already already won in New York 4-2 earlier this month on the first half of a back-to-back. So Give me the minus 110 for the Cats, and then uh, a lean to the under six, minus 105. And then uh, for Sunday, the Panthers are in Philadelphia at 6 o'clock, and the Flyers play at 1 tomorrow. So I like the Flyers on Sunday against the Panthers. All right. Uh, Yeah, I'm definitely going against you guys very heavy on this. I love the Rangers in this game at minus 110. I don't know why I'm the only one on the show that apparently thinks the New York Rangers are a good hockey team. But trust me, the New York Rangers are a goddamn good hockey team. We saw that. Who did they beat up on the other day? Was it the Bruins? Yeah, they yep. beat the shit out of the Bruins. Bruins. Yeah, five to two. Um, tough going against the Jets before that. Here they beat up on uh, Carolina a couple days ago too with a one nothing shutout. Here, um, this team's playing good hockey, man. They have the skill up front. They have the skill in the back. Goaltending's been fine. Shostak has been coming into their own. I love the Rags here. I love them at home too, dude. They've been so good all year. Twenty four nine and zero, which is absolutely unbelievable. Um, the Panthers on a three game losing streak. You guys are talking about it. I'm seeing now Alexander Barkov is expected to miss for this game. He's been listed as doubtful, uh, with an undisclosed injury. So a broken dick for Barkov. That's a big loss down the middle for the Preds here. Um, I, I don't understand why anybody wouldn't take the rags on this. So minus one ten, I'm going to be all over them, uh, over under in this game. I'm going to lean towards the under. With that being said, I don't really love it, man. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw a little bit of a shootout here, just both teams kind of unloading each other. Uh, we saw this game on March 4th a bit earlier. It was a 4-2 final. Uh, I'm not sure if there's an empty netter in that goal. Maybe it wasn't a close over game, but uh, I don't know. You know, it's a Saturday night, big boy hockey here, uh, and I think the big boys are going to show up offensively for each team. But I love the Rangers in this game, especially with no Barkov. Uh, okay, moving down to the 10 p.m. time slot, we have the Calgary Flames against the Vancouver Canucks. Game itself is in Vancouver here. Flames on the money line sitting at plus 150. Canucks on the money line on this one, uh, sitting at minus 180 here. Over under sitting at six, over paying off minus 130. The under is at uh, plus 110 in this game. I've been so anti Vancouver lately. And I don't know why. Like, they're not a bad hockey team. They're a good regular season team. But we're getting to that point of the year where it's like some of these teams that maybe thrived in the regular season aren't really capable of playing playoff hockey. And I I shouldn't say capable of playing playoff hockey, but just haven't, I don't believe, had that next step, I guess. And maybe it helps the cause that they're playing the Flames and they're not really a great team. The Flames have been shit on the road this year, uh, 15 4 and four and the, the Canucks have been awesome at home 23 7 and four uh Canucks in division records as well 12 6 and 0 which is absolutely sick this year so yeah I think you got to go with Vancouver here at minus 180 a little bit of juice to play um I don't mind that though over under in this game Casey Smith has been slipping off a little bit lately I don't know I, you know what it is I watched him who did I watch him play I forget what fucking game it was but he just he looked a little busy and a little struggling in between the pipes there uh, and then Jacob Markstrom has been great for the Flames team all year long borderline carrying them I don't really have a play in the total at six I might lean towards the under at six and a half you can probably find it at like plus or sorry minus 130 is like an additional line here 
Yeah, I don't really have too strong of feelings on this one. I like the Canucks. I'm going to wait to see what our, our Canucks expert over there says in, in Vancouver. But yeah, their home record as opposed to the Flames road record is my main reason for that. Um, but yeah, also, yeah, the Canucks have more to play for. Flames are pretty much out of it here. So yeah, I like, like the Canucks minus 180 and uh, lean to the under six at plus 110. Markster might be coming back a little early or maybe a little late. Uh, it depends on what's going on there in Calgary. But, of course, he does want to play this game against his old team. So that makes me a little bit concerned for the uh, the Canucks here. Certainly don't have the goaltending advantage with the Smith in that. He's been fine. He's been fine. He's not he's not Demko, but he's been good enough. Um, and, uh, but yeah, the, the Flames have been, you know, playing some bad teams. But this is a game that they'll want to get up for, divisional matchup. These teams hate each other. So, uh, I can't play the minus 180 here, even though I think the Canucks will win the game. Uh, but uh, the other six, though, I mean, the Flames' defense has been bad all year, but uh, with Marks from back, uh, that, 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 that'll that help a lot in terms of uh, preventing goals. So the under six, again, it's a Canucks game. You don't overthink it. Their power play is not good, but their their 5-on-5 five five defense is elite. And, uh, yeah, I think I haven't bet this game, but uh, under six would be the, uh, the way to go. Or There's six and a half out there to so shop around, so... Under in this one. Okay. Um, all right. We are brought to you by Hall of Fame Bets. Uh, win bigger by betting smarter this NBA season with Hall of Fame Bets, the sports betting analytics platform for parlays, player props, and game lines. Research every bet with historical stats and data. Enter any parlay idea into Hall of Fame Bets revolutionary parlay optimizer tool to get hit rates broken down by leg, as well as an expected probability for the entire parlay. Sort all players by hit rate for any bet to learn which players are hot and which picks have value. So stop betting in the dark and join over 30,000 users researching with Hall of Fame Bets to craft more intelligent, data-driven parlays. Download the Hall of Fame Bets app or visit hofbets.com and use code SGPN to get 50% off your first month today. Start researching, start winning with Hall of Fame Bets. All right. Moving down to the 10 p.m. time slot here. We have the Tampa Bay Lightning against the Los Angeles Kings. Game itself is in L.A. here. Tampa on the money line sitting at plus 110. Kings on the money line at minus 130. Uh, Over-under sitting at 6. over paying off minus 112. The under minus 108 here. Um, Joel, I'm going to throw this one your way, buddy. What do we got? Tampa, L.A. Well, I know I'm against you guys on this one. Uh, finally, we've had a lot of contested plays, at least uh, between Ryan and I, anyway. Um, yeah, I like the Kings here quite a bit. Uh, Lightning, like uh, the talent was saying, uh, they, they didn't play well against the Sharks. They didn't play well against the Knights, and they didn't play well against the Panthers, but they keep winning these games, and that's not very uh, sustainable. I know Vasilevsky is playing better now, but uh, no, the Kings have been excellent, five and five the whole season long. Now they got Victor Arvidsson back. That's a huge deal for their offense. They didn't have many goal scores before he returned, um, so that that's that's major, major. And uh, yeah, like he he was he was flying everywhere. I love to see it. You don't see a lot of speed in this Kings team, but he, he was providing it that night. So I think he injects some pace and uh, firepower into this lineup. So give me the Kings here. I think they're the better team. They're playing better hockey right now, and they just don't have as good of a goaltender. And Kudrov is on an absolute heater, though. He's 15 points in the last three games. Uh, it's fucking unreal. He's going to make the the heart race a sweat again after McKinnon got all the way up to minus 300. Now he's uh, <laughs> he's he's falling back down. So we'll see what goes on there. And the I like the under six minus 108 again. It's a Kings game. Not a lot of offense going on, but elite defensively and the Lightning. Um, yeah, they, they they go as far as Kucherov goes, and then their power play. And we know the Kings have uh, top three penalty kill in the league, if not the best. I know at one point it was the best, but certainly top three, and that'll uh, negate the Lightning's uh, major advantage, which is their power play. So I, I love the Kings here, and I like the under quite a bit as well. Yeah, as you alluded to, we're, we're going. I'm I'm against you here with Lightning uh, plus 100. There, that seems like they they turned it on after that that three or four days off there early March. They've now won five in a row, six of their past seven. Yeah, maybe not deserved wins, but they're, but they're finding ways to win, and that's what this Lightning team does. Kings have had a, a few good good games in a row, but three they won three of their past four. Two of those wins were against Chicago, so we can't really read into that too much good win against the the wild there six nothing at home but i think the lightning here are playing good road hockey they're they're winning games and i think plus 110 a little bit a little bit uh too much for them here so i'm taking that one and then probably the under six at uh, minus 108 uh vasilevsky has been better kings have been getting better goaltending from both riddich and, and uh talbot there so give me the lightning and the under 
Are you watching the Hurricanes game, Talon? What the fuck's going on? Five? No, five? I'm not. I'm watching Dallas Pittsburgh right now. Oh, okay. Shit, it's five. Did, five, not, five see, like did not see eleven goals in the uh, Hurricanes. Yeah. Game. <laughs> I don't think anybody. I was gonna bet the under too. I'm glad I stayed away from that <laughs> one. Um. Yeah. So for this game, Tampa Bay versus uh, LA here, I love the Lightning in this game, man. Five game winning streak for Tampa, like Ryan was saying here, and they're playing good hockey too. Uh, maybe not the last game. I get that the San Jose was a bust, but you, sometimes you play down to these shit opponents here, man. But I, I like to think that Tampa Bay is going to be showing up for this LA team, especially considering that it's the first night of a back to back here. They have Anaheim the next night on the Sunday. Uh, I imagine we'll see Johansson for the Anaheim game. So you'll see Vassy ready to go for this, or should I say Varlamov? Eh? <laughs> yeah, tied that one back there. Um, yeah, man. So actually, I really like Tampa in here. I'm not shitting on LA. Uh, LA has had a much better road record this year than they have a home record. A lot of that came to that massive streak they were on earlier in the year. Um, but with that being said, dude, Tampa's just playing awesome hockey. No one's talking about Anthony Declare. Can we take a fucking second to talk about Anthony fucking declare? Tampa traded for him at the trade deadline. He was like a prospect in the third overall pick. In five games, Declare has four goals and three assists for seven points. He's playing top line minutes here with Kucherov and Point. If you're like in fantasy playoffs, you're looking for a quick ad, maybe you can pluck this guy off waivers. Christ only had 27 points in 56 games for San Jose this year. So you might be able to find him lurking at the bottom. That's not a bad pick to get you going through the playoff spot here. But he's been a hell of an addition for this team uh and we know that he's a big tough fast physical and offensively minded player too as well i think he's going to help tampa boatloads when it comes to this playoff run i guess i have them getting in i think we all do at this point uh so yeah shout out to the him he's been an absolute stud for this lightning team love lightning um lean towards the under of this game six minus 108 i wish it was at six and a half one of those games that i always say if there's an early girl like you know when they see that number move down to six and a half or something i'll probably be waiting to kind of pounce on that i i've been all over a declare lately in the uh, in the discord anyway he's he's crucial for the selecting team because they need more depth scoring <laughs> you know kucherov and point can't do everything and when he's playing with uh, an elite playmaker that's when he really produces that's why he only had uh, so many points in, the, in san jose because he has nobody he's, pass him the puck he's playing with a bag <laughs> of chips for christ's sake yeah like he had his best season in florida you wonder why because he was playing with elite guys i think he was he was uh with barkov for for some time and um i think he was trocheck maybe Maybe two it's at one point but yeah anyway uh he, he was awesome in florida for that reason and it's good to see him on a winning team again for sure yeah. man i think it was only a third round pick too like that's been and a prospect but that's peanuts right so uh, all right, moving down to the 10.40 p.m. time slot here. We have the Columbus Blue Jackets against the Vegas Golden Knights, baby. Uh, Columbus on the money line sitting at plus 250. Knights on the money line at minus 310. Over-under sitting at 6.5 here. Overpaying off minus 102. The under minus 118 in this one. Uh, how did Vegas do that? I didn't even look. Did they beat? Yeah, they did. They beat up on Seattle. Pretty, pretty, pretty okay with a 3-1 no. win yesterday. I didn't watch it. Was, it. I was I was in bed. Were they dominated? <laughs> now they're fucking lucky win for these Knights, man. They yeah? scored the 2-1 winner with like two minutes left, and it was challenged, and it was oh, like yeah. millis, millimeters <laughs> offside, onside. It was, it was another uh, lucky. I mean, Vegas are just they're, – they're getting all the cherries. You know, three cherries in a row in the slots. That's what they're doing right now for the past month. <laughs> all these dumb ones i live by the mindset though that you can't judge the vegas golden knights against when they play the kraken because those games are always a pretty big of a battle here usually like a one goal game or a two goal game for empty netter or something here um now as far as this game goes i don't fucking know man the jackets on the second end of a back-to-back here i feel like that based alone we're gonna see some value on vegas minus 310 is just through the fucking roof you can't bet that I won't be betting this, but like gun to my head, you, you make me give you a pick or something. I'd probably say Vegas puck line. I know they're not playing great. I know you guys just hate this team with like your fucking like like they I don't know did something bad to you. But I'm I'm not that hard against Vegas here. I think if you if this team let's face it, I had this team in my top tier in playoffs for Christ's sake. So if this team can't go in there and beat the shit out of Columbus on the second half of a back to back, they don't deserve to be there. And you know what? Sometimes the guy's got to stand with his guns here. So maybe I will do that. I'm gonna bet the Vegas on the puck by minus one point five, minus one thirty five here. Uh over under in this game, I'm gonna lean towards the under uh six and a half and minus one eighteen. Uh, I don't Knights think have been I re- awesome. Sorry, Knights have been awesome at home. 22, 11, and 2. 
Yeah, I don't think I really overly hate the, hate this Golden Knights team. In fact, I like them here on the puck line minus one thirty five. You can still get a minus one twenty out there if you, if you shop around. So that that's a good look there. But yeah, I, I play it minus one thirty five. Columbus, uh, their last few back to backs, they lost six one against Winnipeg. They lost five uh, three in Pittsburgh there. So not good on back to backs. Vegas isn't playing great, but this is the type of game where they can, you know, go in there and just put up six or seven goals. I feel like against Columbus on a back-to-back in in Denver tonight, so they have that that altitude issue. Going to Vegas on on, on uh, no days rest, so yeah, Vegas on the puck line minus one thirty five is my play here. Can't pick a side here, you know. I'm not back in the Knights, and I'm definitely not back in the Blue Jackets on a back-to-back uh, against a good team, goodish team. Um, so just give me the over six and a half with the Knights or the black, the blackets, the Blue Jackets on the back to back. Maybe a Blue Jackets team total, a cheap or two and a half. Maybe they they can sneak a few by uh, Logan Thompson or Aiden Hill. Are the Knights playing on Sunday too? I know there's there's ten games on Sunday. Um, let me look. They are not. They are not. No. So it should be Aiden Hill then, I guess. But either way, he's not been great anyway. So the you know, over six and a half, I think, would be the only look for me. All right, moving down to the 10.40 p.m. time slot. Final game on the docket. This sucks. We have Chicago. <laughs> That's for last. <laughs> All right, for real, eh? Like, we should have switched the order of, like, the Tampa one in this when we were reading it. Whatever. Uh, we have the Chicago Blackhawks against the San Jose Sharks here. Game itself is in San Jose. Chicago on the money line sitting at minus 115. Sharks on the money line at minus 105. The over-under sitting at 6. Overpaying off minus 118. The under minus 102. Let me tell you right now, gentlemen. There is nobody in the world. I would rather hear it to take a shot at cap in this game than our very own, my pal, Ryan Gilbert. Ryan Gilbert, Chicago Blackhawks, San Jose Sharks. How's this one going to play out, baby? What a game here. We just saw this one on Sunday in Chicago. Blackhawks won that one uh, 5-2. But, of course, they're a shit team on the road, 5-28-1. and one. Sharks are just a shit team in general. One win in their past at least 10 games here. Um uh, yeah, you, you can't bet this game. I don't know. Maybe maybe an over six and hope for some <laughs> open hockey, but like it could be just be a, a very low scoring game as well. So this is just, just a, a complete pass game here. Sharks did put up a decent game against the Lightning for for once. I mean, coming back home from that road trip where they just looked absolutely pitiful. Uh, so otherwise, I would like the Blackhawks here, even though they've only won that one road game since uh, early November. Uh, this would be a good opportunity for I me. Mean, it's probably the only one they've been favored in since, uh, I don't know, October. <laughs> it's certainly not very often. Um, I lean to the Blackhawks, but I don't know. It's it's, it's too, tough, too tough to call. The uh, the shitty team overs that the, the, the didn't work with the Ducks and the Blackhawks. <laughs> Blackhawks didn't score a single goal. Um, uh, but I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it again. Give me the over six. Minus 118, you can find a lot better prices elsewhere. Uh, just, just give me uh, give me goals in this dumb game. I, I think that uh, <laughs> there won't be much defense. And Come on, you got, you guys got to entertain entertain the fans and just, just score some goals, right? Mm-hmm. You can't just mm-hmm. uh, play a 3-1 game when you, you suck anyway. So, Gentle. Give us a reason to watch it. If you're not going to score goals, fight or something. Oh, I'll give you a reason to watch it. All right. <laughs> Gentlemen. Gentle. Men, gentlemen, gentlemen. <laughs> Growing up, I was raised the right way. I was taught, you know, sometimes it takes more time. Things are better off if you just put effort into them, you know. One thing that was always drilled into my mind as a young kid was quality over quantity. You know, they say it's a saying. It's a, it's more than a saying. It's a method to live by, right? Quality over quantity. What do we know about sharks? They swim. They disappear. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What else do we know about sharks? They're lonely. They They're create fake out aliases. <laughs> we're, not, we're not doing that. What we know about sharks? They got two dicks. What do we know about black cocks? <laughs> they only got one. They're pretty, they're, but they're pretty goddamn big. And sometimes it's about quality over quantity, baby. We're betting Chicago in this game. We're throwing down the fucking bank. 
if you're not betting at least a hundred dollars on Chicago to win this game, then I don't know what the fuck tell you. You should not be listening to this goddamn show, all right? Because this is an all-time Talonitics play. We're going quality over quantity. We're going one big old black cock over two little baby shark dicks, all right? Hundred percent love Chicago in this game. There's your fucking lean here. Let's go uh, over on there. We're going over because this is going to be so boring as shit. Love the Blackhawks. <laughs> love the over, baby. Quality over quantity. Simple as that. Uh, that that's the first time I've heard um, someone make a case for the the over and then use the argument that it's going to be boring. Usually, yeah. it's uh, the other way around. But I didn't like it. Say, didn't say they're going to be good goals. I <laughs> didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That wraps that up. Uh, consensus, please, gentlemen. What do we got here? Yeah, we got uh, Winnipeg minus 130. We have St. Louis, Minnesota under five and a half minus 102. Predators minus 162. Oilers, Leafs over six and a half minus 115. Devils, either money line or minus 162 or puck line plus 145. And then Flames, Canucks under six plus 110. Okay. Um, all right, we're going to move down to our lock dogs and totals for this game's current standings. Jolie has a record of 58, 59, and 3, up 0. 0.52 units. Myself with a record of 59 and 61, down 3.92 units. Uh, Ryan with a record of 53, 66, and 1, down 14.02 units. Uh, Rye Guy, let's throw it to you on this one, buddy. What do you got? Yeah, kick it off here. My lock are the Jets, minus 130 at uh, the New York Islanders. I, I locked them up against the Devils, now locking up again here against the Islanders. I hope they can at least get this one done. I think the Isles are kind of unraveling a bit. Uh, my dog, the Lightning, plus 110 at the Kings. I think it should be a good game. I think the Lightning are a little bit undervalued right now in, in the market as a whole. And my total is Blues Wild, under 5.5, minus 102. Neither of those two teams can really score too much, and they're playing uh, pretty good in net. When did Barkov get hurt? Do you know? It's undisclosed. He's day-to-day -day undisclosed, but he missed last game. Just expected ah, to sit out. And they game. lost 3 nothing. Mm -hmm. See, I had the Panthers, but I wasn't sure about the Barkov thing. So I'm going to call an audible here. Give me the give me the Oilers. Give me the Oilers. That, uh, what's the price oh. now? Minus, minus 130? Go fuck know. yourself, Joel. I know. Yeah, well, I think it's minus 130. Oh, you know what? You know what? Hmm. I almost said the Sharks. <laughs> <laughs> no! <laughs> After what it said? Are you kidding? Yeah. <laughs> just just, just go so full bad. send on my, my stupid uh, march here. I mean, lock dogs totals. Um, no, nah, we'll, we'll keep it serious. We're going to go with the Oilers. Minus 130. I think that the uh, McDavid shows up for these games more than Matthews does, and they're just, just a much better team, especially without Mon in the lineup. So, uh, yeah, minus 130. So that's fine. Uh, next up, uh, Flyers Bruins under 5.5 plus 110. I couldn't find a, a suitable dog, so we're just going to go with the total here. It's going to be a sleepy morning game. Two good defensive teams. Uh, bounce back spot for Swayman. If not, we'll get all marked. That's okay too. So under five and a half in that one. And then the, uh, but the real total, we're going to go back to the Oilers game. Oilers Leafs over six and a half minus 115. Uh, I think it'll be a, a showcase game for both stars on both teams. So uh, yeah, give me uh, that, that four, three overtime win for the, the Oils. Dude, if you got, I'm not going to lie. If you had locked up the Sharks, I was going to change my lock to the Blackhawks. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Want to do it? Uh, no, <laughs> I don't, no, I don't. Uh, <laughs> for my lock, I'm taking the New Jersey Devils in regulation versus Ottawa at minus 110 here. Uh, I think the Devils are the much better team, especially at this point in the year. And we, we saw them, how they showed up against Winnipeg. I expect them to beat the wheels off Ottawa. Um, as well, Ottawa, you know, they play up to better teams. When it comes to these mid-teams, they kind of get dominated a little bit. And let's face it, these guys are just ready to get the hell out of that abysmal shit city. Wherever that nerd was that used to fucking shit talk me on Twitter, that's a Leaf fan from Ottawa. You can suck it, bud. Your city sucks and your friends and family suck. Uh, for my dog, I'm going to take St. Louis Moneyline uh, versus Minnesota plus 124. Blues, you know, Blues been playing some goddamn fun hockey to watch and some goddamn successful hockey. They're tight. They're playing very tight. 
very well structured game you know defensively it hasn't been the greatest here throughout the season but these last couple of games man it's been something special and plus with bennington back there and sometimes when you have a goalie that's playing you like at the top of his level it just helps ease everything over you know the defensemen aren't afraid to make a little mistake here or there and confidence is is big so i love st louis in this game versus minnesota plus 124 over under detroit nashville under six plus 102 really really wish this was at six and a half here but uh i'm gonna ride with it uh saros has been awesome lion not as much but uh detroit has been better since they got you know larkin back last game and they're on a bit of a two-game winning streak coming into this they're off that seven game skid i guess so i think we're gonna see a nice firm hard playoff hockey matchup here um all right anything else you want to add here boys or what no i'm good I got one quick thing. You just get one guess, okay? Tally's trivia corner. One guess. Who, for active players, currently has the most playoff goals? So most playoff goals scored by an active NHL player. No Googling. One guess each. Sidney Crosby. Third place. Joel? It's, it's too obvious, but Patrick Kane. Definitely not Patrick Kane. I don't even know where he is on the list. He's not. <laughs> he was so, my second guess, though. So. All right. Yeah, no, it's not. It I'm is. Surprised. So Sidney Crosby is close. Sidney Crosby has 71 goals. He's third place. Joel Pavelski. Joel Pavelski has the most NHL uh, playoff goals. He's sitting at 73. In second place, you have Ovi with 72. Speaking of quantity over quality, he's 40 years old. He plays in every fucking playoff series. It's not even, but yeah. those Sharks teams were sick back when he was like, the I captain. know, I know. Right. So, yeah, so that's a fun little tidbit there. Ali's Trivia Corner, lots of fun. Um, all right, every go check out the Sports Gambling Podcast. Eric Webster, that's the place to be. Tons of stuff in the world of sports, baby. Uh, 11 hockey games tomorrow on Saturday, 10 on Sunday. It's going to be a sick weekend to be a hockey fan. Uh, that is going to be a blast. So, we'll be sure to check all that. March Madness is going on. Uh, you guys are both on UConn, so hell yeah, I hope that they come through for you. That's great. Uh, what else we got going on? You know, soccer's doing its thing with Bundesliga. Uh, <laughs> NFL draft's going to be coming up soon, too, eventually in April, so that'll be awesome as well. We got the Masters sniffing up, too, in a couple weeks. Cannot wait for that. Obviously, we'll be diving into it when it comes here a little bit closer. Uh, baseball's doing its thing. When's the official opening day? Isn't that like in a week or six days or something it's, like that? It's Thursday, yeah, six days. Thursday? Okay, cool. The 28th, I believe that is. So mm -hmm. to all of our baseball pals, we'll be very excited for that to get rocking and rolling. Uh, NBA, I'm sure NBA, we haven't even talked about I'm sure basketball playoffs are a thing. That'll be coming up soon, too. Uh, tons of stuff in the world of sports, baby. You can find all that information at the SGPN website. Be sure to go check it out. Uh, listen to the other shows. Everybody kills it. Read all the articles. Last chance to kind of get in that uh, Ryan's uh, fancy hockey articles that he's pumping out. He'll help you win your playoffs. And if you do win your playoffs and you read his articles, you automatically owe him 15% 15 of all winnings. So I will be collecting that. I'll be taking a cut of about 4% myself. But 11% of that will be going to him. So just make sure that you know that. Uh, so hell yeah, check those out. Also, shout out to all of our friends and pals in the Discord. Discord's awesome. It's an absolute blast. A lot of basketball talk going in there. Uh, everybody's having a good time in there, man. So shout out to all of our friends and pals. If you want to get into the Discord, Discord, reach out to myself or Ryan on Twitter. We'll be sure to point you in the right direction, or you can reach out to the HGP Twitter account. Social media assistant producer will get you going. He's a killer out there. He'll hook you up. He's a good guy. He'll tell you everything you need to do. Uh, or what else you can do is just go to the little crybaby store, because when the Oilers get the fucking doors blown off them tomorrow by the Toronto Maple Leafs, you're going to find our very old Joel Meyer looking there to soak up his sober tears. And when you guys are in there together, you can be like, hey, bro, how do you get in the Discord? And he'll be like, well, I'm really sad right now, but I mean, I'm really just give me a couple of minutes. I can wash up my tears from my eyes, and then maybe I'll tell you how to get into the Discord. And then, uh, then that's how you get into the Discord, baby. How you like that? Okay. Yeah, speaking, no. speaking of pumping up tires, make sure you leave us a five star rating and review on Apple, and uh, you know, make sure you subscribe on YouTube as well. I probably just gave the Leafs a win by locking up the Oilers. So, yeah. I know. Actually, I love that you did that. I love that so much. Hammer the Leafs tomorrow. That's awesome. Much of the fucking... We got to come with come a nickname for And the Panthers like will that. win. Watch. All right? Yeah, 100%. Um, all right, everybody. My name is Talon Jenkins. You can find me at Twitter at Talon underscore Jenkins 94. I'm Ryan Gilbert. You can follow me on Twitter at rgilbertsop. 
And I'm Joel Myron. You can find me recommending a bet on Oregon, the Ducks, tomorrow, uh, plus five and a half, plus six. I think it's uh, one of the – could be the last game. It's a night game, so plenty of time to catch up, listen to this, and and bet the Ducks. Let's go Oregon or Oregon, we need a good team. We need a team worth quacking for because our old Ducks, is, yeah. they suck. So I'm all for you know, Justin Herbert, Oregon Ducks. Let's go. Cool. Oh, the, the football team is going to be good this year. Again, but uh, yeah. Looking forward to that, too. Let's go, Ducks. Hell yeah. All right, everybody. Thanks for hanging out. Peace.